Now to make our not so hard lemonade, we will be using the following. I'm going to be using eight lemons. You could use up to 12 lemons, depending on how tart you want your lemonade to be. I'm going to be using up to two cups of sugar. Again, depending on the number of lemons and how strong or how light you like your lemonade or sweet you like your lemonade to be, that is entirely up to you as to the amount of sugar you're going to use. I'm going to be using a packet of bread yeast, your original, original kind of bread yeast. You can use wine yeast if you've got it, but if you don't have it, this is going to work. You might want to have a gallon of clean filtered water on hand. We'll be using somewhat less than that, but it's good to have at least one gallon ready. We're going to need five or six swing type bottles to help hold in some pressure because this is going to be a slightly carbonated beverage. If you don't have these types of bottles, you can also recycle pop bottles because they were also designed to hold pressure. Another accessory, if you've got one, an airlock with bung would be helpful if it will fit your one gallon container. Also, what might be helpful would be a strainer to help strain out the seeds from the lemons. Also, if you've got one, a funnel would be helpful to help us funnel everything into the bottles. And of course, using your sanitizer of choice, you want to make sure that everything has been properly cleaned and sanitized. This time around, I'm going to be using Star San as my sanitizer. And that is what we're going to be using to make this not so hard lemonade. Okay, the first thing we want to do is start juicing our lemons. Being careful with your very sharp knife. We'll go ahead and begin that process. And we'll just let the rest of that just strain on through. Okay, now that it's strained through, I ended up with just under, just shy of two cups of lemon juice. Okay, at this point, we want to pour off about four cups of our water. And the reason why we're doing that is that we need to make room in our container to be able to add our lemon juice, two cups of lemon juice, and approximately two cups of sugar. And that's not all going to fit <laughs> if this thing is already full. All right, that is four cups. Just to be on the safe side, because you never can tell, let's make that about five cups, because we can always add more later on. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this over. I'm gonna go ahead and pour in our lemon juice. And let's go ahead and add in our sugar. Okay, gives us a little bit of room to breathe, which is fine. For the moment, let's put our cap back on nice and tight because we want to shake this up to dissolve that sugar. Let's move the breakables out of the way. And let's start shaking. I think that's good enough. Now then, let's get ready to add in our yeast. Now, just out of curiosity, I decided to take a hydrometer reading before adding in the yeast, and it looks like my hydrometer reading is coming in at 1.054. Now, most hard lemonade recipes usually will call for the additional vodka to provide the alcohol. Since we're not doing that, we're going to rely on using yeast or the fermentation that it will provide 
to convert some of the sugars that we've added to our lemonade into alcohol and also adding a little bit of carbonation. So to do that, all we need to do is go ahead and add in our yeast. Put our cap back on for a moment. Now at this point, we could just leave it the way it is, but we're just gonna give it a very light little swirl to incorporate some of the yeast. And if you are in possession of an airlock, then this will be a good time to go ahead and replace the cap if your airlock will fit, and in which case this one will not. Put our cap back on. And this time we don't wanna tighten it real tight. We wanna keep it very, very loose. Basically, we want it loose enough so that when the yeast starts consuming all of the, or some of the sugar, and starts producing that CO2, the gas is gonna have a way to come out. But we don't want bugs to get in. So we wanna put our cap on just rather loosely, just enough that air can get out, or CO2 can get out, and the bugs can't get in. And for the next day, we just wanna put that aside Somewhere dark is nice. I mean, it doesn't have to be, but somewhere where it's not in direct sunlight. And we're going to let that ferment for a day. And then we're going to come back to it and bottle it. Okay, now that we've had time to let it sit at room temperature for a little while, we've got a new hydrometer reading. And that comes in at 1.048, giving us an approximate ABV of 0.79%, which is just slightly above the 0.05% needed to be classified as low alcohol, but not higher than enough to be considered as a strictly alcoholic drink. Of course, your results will vary depending on how long you let it ferment at room temperature, how much sugar you added, how much lemon juice you added that might have retarded the growth of yeast. So there are variables involved, but right now we're looking at well under 1%. All right, now that we've bottled our not so hard lemonade, we managed to get five bottles, a nice tall iced tea glass worth, and a little bit left over, probably for another glass. These we're gonna go ahead and put in the refrigerator straight away. I think uh, this has got enough carbonation built up. Let them get cold, and probably in another day or two, uh, we'll go ahead and crack one open. But for the time being, all things being equal, this one is done. Okay, now that we've made our not-so-hard lemonade, a couple of things can be said that we've already said before. One, it's less than 1% ABV, alcohol by volume. So it's, it's pretty low on the alcohol scale. Um, you know what went in it? Nothing more than just lemons, water, sugar, some yeast, and that basically was it. So you know there's nothing really harmful in it. Uh, it should be carbonated because of the yeast addition that we added. But basically, it's just a carbonated lemonade with just a very little tiny bit of alcohol. Not enough to really get in the way. But what does it taste like? Well, it's going to taste like lemonade, really, quite honestly, without even having tasted it. But because of the yeast, and we did use bread yeast with this instead of uh, standard wine yeast or anything like else like that. So it might have a um, slightly yeasty flavor to it, but we're going to find out right now. Now then, because of the uh, bread yeast that we did use, it does have a slightly softer um, uh, flavor to it. Um, can you taste the bread yeast? Yes, you can. A little bit. I mean, it's not like predominant or anything like that. If you didn't know, if you didn't know that it was made using bread yeast, you probably wouldn't pick it up. But since you did know that you use bread yeast and you know what's in there, you're picking it up a little bit. Uh, carbonation after a short period of time is okay. Yeah, the yeast really didn't have a, a whole lot of time really to start working on, on a lot of that sugar. You, you can tell it's not quite as sweet as it was when it first went in, but it's 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 by a very small amount. 
so if you are making it uh, and you're making it to your normal way of making lemonade, uh, you might want to add like an extra, oh, I don't know, tablespoon of sugar per gallon uh, to help out the difference that the yeast is going to consume. Now, again, had I let, <clears throat> had I let this ferment uh, for a bit longer, then yeah, the alcohol by, uh, alcohol, the, a <laughs> the ABV would have been, of course, higher. Uh, again, standard uh, hard lemonade is like 5%. So this came in at just under 1%. So if you can get it two or three days more of uh, fermenting before bottling it or tasting it, then yeah, you probably would be closer to that two-ish, close to 3% ABV. Still, far less than a standard hard alcohol. But again, uh, second. Yep, uh, once, one last time. Yeah, the, the yeast did have a, a softening effect on the uh, uh, acidity on the lemons. I mean, it's still in there, but it's, it doesn't have that same uh, sharp taste that you normally get with uh, lemonade. It's, I mean, it's lemonade, but it's not as sharp. So uh, there we go. That's my take on making a not-so-hard lemonade. Uh, fairly quick, fairly simple. Takes what, two, maybe three days to make if you want to make it right. And uh, while everybody else is sipping on their mic, <coughs> not to name any names, while everybody else is sipping on their hard lemonade, you can be sipping on your not-so-hard lemonade, and you'll be the wiser. So again, see you in the next video.